I'm Karen Ratner, Artistic Director of India Dance Wales, which is the first company, uh, professional dance company uh, in Wales, and at the moment the only one as well, if you wanted to know. Sorry. <laughs> and tell us, where did you train? Bharatanatyam. Um, I trained from Chitralekha Bowler uh, initially from Birmingham, uh, which is where my parents um, were. Then um, I came away to university to Cardiff and continued my training with her, as well as uh, started to go to India in time, started to go to India to others, and having um, workshops or, or intensives with other gurus as well. And then you decided to do Arangetram? Uh, well, I decided to do Arangetram way before that. It was, my Arangetram was um, a little, um, well, very late, as in Arangetram is meant to be, so to speak, the, you know, for a repertoire, one repertoire that you've learnt and you perform it. But by the time I did my Arangetram, I had actually performed a few repertoires already. But it was more the fact that my um, it, there hadn't been an Arangetram outside of London at that time. And uh, my teacher, uh, Chitraleka Bowler, was doing some Arangetrams for her students in Birmingham. And uh, because I was her oldest student, <laughs> <laughs> she felt that she should at least, you know, s s suggest that to me, and uh, she did. And although it was, you know, late in the day a bit, um, uh, I, I said yes, I, I would like to. And so Cardiff was, so to speak, the first place, more or less, outside London to be doing an Arangitram. So I'm very proud of that one. <laughs> and. Uh, after doing the Arangetram, uh, things became, people became more and more interested in Bharatanatyam and so on. I was getting requests to be doing things, so I left my engineering career and took on dance full time. And, uh, and then, you know, things just progressed from there. So what was the difference in the preparation for an Arangetram and uh, for performance? There's a lot. Um, biggest one really is that you uh, are performing to live musicians and that it's a whole repertoire. Although at that time I did have opportunities to do whole repertoires, um, you don't normally. And the second, uh, well, or the, the probably equal, is that intensity of training, of, you know, pushing yourself to do a full blast, you know, something which I don't think, especially these days, if I look at my students or whatever, there are not many opportunities for a solo performance of two hours plus anywhere. Not very much anyway. So how did you feel after you had done this surrogate? Oh, I think I watched the videos every day because I was missing it. <laughs> you know, you build up to it for so long, so many years, and uh, it's it's also an um, you know a sense of achievement. But at the same time, when the day is over, you're like, oh, you know, the light, you were in the limelight for so long. Your your teachers concentrating on you. Everybody's waiting for it, and then it happens, and it's. Oh, you get ignored now, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, I think I, I was I was very sad uh, because I missed that having rehearsals every day, and you know it, it's not very often that you would rehearse, um, you know, however many hours a day and get 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 all the attention and all the and you're doing your best and you're getting massaged and you know looking after yourself and doing your best. So how many hours did you practice each day? What um, the with the with the with the musicians or after uh, before? Sorry, before and after. Before and and after. After. Oh. Um, 
before, um, in, in my day, <laughs> I was actually working full time as well and I had children by then, um, but I was uh, rehearsing personal just by myself uh, to three to four hours a day and um, then going and seeing my guru from uh, for about four days continuous in the week. I would take one or two days off work and have the weekend. Um, so then when it came to the musicians coming to Cardiff and, and rehearsing, you know, full blast to prepare for the performance, that was generally speaking nine, well not nine, maybe ten till four or five o'clock, something like that. And they came from India? Yes, they did. And they came for a week? No, no, my, my teacher had brought them, Chitraleka had brought them over for, I think at that time they came for six months or something. So I wasn't the only one, uh, but there, there was other work that she was doing, it's just my Arangetram happened to be one of the activities that was happening while they were here. So, in terms of your makeup and the accessories and the jewellery that you wore and the costume that you wore, did you choose that very carefully? For me, and I think that's the case for my, uh, you, you know, my attitude towards the students as well. The costumes and all of that is an 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 additional thing. It's not the main thing. Main main thing was dance. Um, I don't know what you mean by did I choose it carefully. Um, it wasn't that I got costumes done especially for Arangetram. I had some costumes and um, I think I only had about two then and uh, my my teacher lent me one and I wore hers, adjusted it a bit, uh, you know money was tight and uh, the focus like I said was dance. I probably wore her jewellery as well at that time because I might not have had temple jewellery, I'm not <laughs> 100% sure, but those things were not important. Now, first of all, after uh, whether I did an Arangetram or not wasn't it, it was neither here or there really, but dance was something that was very has been very close to me from a very long time. Um, in fact, since I left India, um, which was when I was thirteen, and even before that, as a child, I loved dance, and I was learning Kathak when I was in India. Anyway, and, and part of the reason was because I missed India. That, that was something, you know, that would connect me to it. Anyway, and I, I was just very lucky to have had that opportunity to have something that I could hang on to. Anyway, when I came to Cardiff, um, I continued um, uh, practicing and, and so on. I used to hire a room in student union and practice myself and do small events that occurred and whatever and while that was happening i got approached by a dance center that was opening and said would you teach i said nah not me i'm too young <laughs> you know, i don't know enough and that sort of thing um, and they found another girl who, who was a final year a student and then for a year she taught so she left they came back to me saying you know look we started it can you can you please do it and again I was a bit not sure um, but they said look you know it'll be really a great shame to let that go so I said yes and I, I think that's the best thing uh, for dance that um, you know has happened in Cardiff uh, for Bharatanatyam that is um, so I started to teach one hour um, a week and um, people were greatly interested and what I found slowly was that at, in the beginning I was by myself, I was practicing by myself and, and um, whatever connection there was with other people or with a similar you know, uh, interest or something I could get from, that I could feed myself from, I had to go to Birmingham. But slowly when I started to teach, um, they were becoming interested, we were having events that they were performing at, at or maybe even with me after a few years and so on. 
and um, things just grew from there and that was 30 years ago or something like that. <laughs> no, 25 years ago probably. Um, and so I'm not alone. And, you know, now there's a whole community. I mean, you just saw the class downstairs. Those are the little ones. But, you know, all together India Dance Wales have got about 100 students in Cardiff, Bristol, Swansea and Carmarthen. And I don't teach all of them. Um, it's the people that I have trained that are continuing to do that. So, well, I think it's very nice now that my... Um, joints are creaking. <laughs> I don't feel sad. I don't feel, oh, that's the end of it. I feel, oh, it doesn't matter. There are other people who are doing it. And I, I think, I don't think there's anything better than that, that feeling really. It's almost like being a parent that, you know, you, you, you've passed on something and uh, it's great.